Over this past week, I've been building a really interesting benchmark. What's your minimum specification? So as tech journalists, we use benchmarks to measure performance of processors, graphics, memory. Uh, the idea is that these tests simulate real-world uh, workloads, or they are real-world workloads themselves, and it gets a sense of how different processors, different graphics cards, different memory performs against each other. Now, as part of my role at Anantec, as part of CPU editor, I do about 100, 120 benchmarks per processor that we test. Um, mixture of you know rendering, office, uh, that sort of thing. Most of them real world, some synthetic, some micro benchmarks, so we understand exactly what's going on in, under the hood. Now, a couple of years ago, I used to have a Chromium compile benchmark where I would compile the latest version of Chromium and we'd see just how all the different processors perform in that benchmark. When we upgraded uh, the Windows version from 1803 to 1909, unfortunately that benchmark no longer worked. So I've been racking my brains trying to find something that's reasonable and more relevant to the user base today. And I happened to stumble upon a really, really interesting and easy test to run, which is the RISC-V toolchain compilation. Now, there's a lot of words that maybe people haven't heard before. So RISC-V is the new open source ISA that is going into a lot of microcontrollers uh, these days. Its specification is fully free to download, um, and you can essentially build your own processors with it. It's the tool of choice for a lot of universities because it's open source, so it's free to use. And there are companies uh, such as Sci-5 that have built cores from the specification and you can go license them in the same way you can license ARM cores. Initially, I built this benchmark based on the GitHub source code available. Um, I just wrapped it in a, a WSL, a Windows subsystem for Linux wrapper, put it into my benchmark suite and started running it. What the RISC-V toolchain is, according to Sci-5, I'm going to read exactly verbatim what they sent me here, is it's a set of programming tools that are the basis for building new software on RISC-V, from kernels at the heart of the operating system to the development environments used to compile and debug new programs. The RISC-V GNU toolchain on GitHub builds a C and C++ cross compiler with generic GNU-lib and more sophisticated glibc toolchain. More test suites and other compilers, libraries and tools are available, but building this cross compiler means developers on many platforms can build RISC-V applications to test in virtual environments or native hardware. With the fast pace of new con contributions and rising popularity of RISC-V among the open source community, there are regular updates and improvements to keep pace with. So essentially it enables the tools to build software on RISC-V hardware. Uh, the benchmark itself, the compilation itself, um, very few lines of, of code uh, in, in Bash. Uh, and when you run through on uh, WSL or a bunch of systems, uh, you get to see lots and lots of lines of you know everything just being sorted out. Now what my test does is it runs through that compiler. It runs a fresh full compile uh, of the toolchain. It completely does a clean of any previous files that have come out. Um, and I've made my test portable and offline, so I don't need to be connected to the internet in order to make it to work. Managed to run it on a few systems initially just to see how well it goes. Now with these compile type benchmarks, there's usually lots of uh, serial code to do with uh, cross-compile linkage of libraries, but also in parts it can be very multi-threaded. So we're going to get, we expect to see a system with any compiled benchmark where sometimes you have more cores than you have, say, memory bandwidth, or single thread dominates, so it's the fastest single core systems that tend to get the best performance. Um, with a Chromium, with a Chromium compile back in the day, it was very much more single-threaded focused. If we go to Linux compile, that's been multi-threaded a lot, so you get a lot of um, throughput from that sort of test. This sort of uh, RISC-V toolchain is relatively new enough that I think we should get some good legs on it. RISC-V is ushering in the next era of computing. Are you ready to break free? Right here, right now. Join us and learn more. So how are the results? Um, I've managed to test a bunch of consumer CPUs, a bunch of workstation CPUs, even a few enterprise CPUs, and even a few um, CPUs that are kind of different and off, off the beaten path. So here are the results. As you can see, uh, instead of um, showing a time for the results, I've converted that into compilations per day. Um, with this metric, you tend to see more of a 
um, an idealized speed up, uh, as it were. So here we can definitely tell that, you know, someone with 60 compiles a day is twice as fast as 30 compiles a day. Um, but when you have several orders of magnitude on the compile times, if you just report the times, it can be pretty confusing. So we're going with compiles per day here. Now, we haven't tested the best and the brightest from both sides of the fence. Sorry for that. We just haven't got around to it yet. Um, but right at the top here, we've got AMD's Ryzen 9 5950X, 16 core, um, running it at 68.2 compiles per day. Next up is the Xeon W1290P. Now, this is essentially the 10900K, uh, but for the workstation market, uh, which means that the turbo profile is, usually, is a bit slightly different. And that essentially comes in at roughly the same number. You know, if these were rounded with each hit 68, for both um amd's threadripper 3960x there's a 24 core system you know it's coming in slightly slower so somewhere between 16 core and 24 core are actually kind of getting around that bump um then the next down on the zmw uh 6950x that's actually in what's in my main system that i run um that's a 10 core on an older 10 core system running at 51.4 compiles per day so even though there's a generational uplift you know about you know we're getting 40% uplift in a few generations there. Um, Ryzen 9 4900HS, this is the Zen 2 35 watt based mobile CPU that's in the Zephyrus G14. That's eight cores there in a mobile form factor matching 10 cores, an older high end desktop from Intel 10 cores uh, at 125, 140 watts. Then we go down um, Intel six core mobile chip. Uh, Xeon W3175X, it's got really low, looks like 28 cores, um, just isn't ideal here. Uh, Ryzen 3 3100, so that's um, AMD 4 core, uh, but in a desktop form factor, followed by AMD 8 core in a 15 watt form factor, they seem to be doing roughly the same. You know, Broadwell E, um, then Haswell, more Haswell. Uh, I7 8550U, that's uh, quad core Whiskey Lake, it's getting about 26. Um, i3 6300, this is Skylake at 65 watts, so at 65 watts Skylake versus um, 15 watt Whiskey Lake, they're about the same. Then a, a mobile Skylake at 15 watts. Then we've got the uh, Shaoxin coming in at 18. Microsoft Xbox One X, One at Xbox One S. It's a future. It's a product for a future video. Um, that's coming in at just 16, and then uh, quad core Jaguar coming in at you know, just under eight. And I've got a few systems still currently running um, with this test. And yeah, this is all just, you know, risk five tool chain. And the, the, these are the Sci five guys. Um, they've recently announced this new mini ITX board. This is designed to go straight into a standard form factor mini ITX system. You've got uh, onboard memory, 24 pin power, PCIe slot, uh, M.2, Wi-Fi. So the idea is that you can compile your tool chain, you can run an emulated RISC-V environment, um, build your software, then eventually buy one of these. I think these are coming out by the end of the year. Um, so 8 gig DDR4, 32 meg flash, you know, removable drive. It's even got a USB 3.2 Gen 1. Um, these are going to actually run quite expensive. These are about, what, $660, I think. So this is just, you know, initially for developers who want to go out and then perhaps go and build your own um, you know, risk five cores or get the guys at sci five and license some of their cores. Um, but that's a new benchmark, uh, risk five compile. Uh, I set my script to run it for a minimum three hours on whatever systems on some of the fast systems. That means it's running 10 times. Some of the slower systems, it's only once or twice. Um, and out of there, you know, we pick out the, the runs that sometimes fail. It seems to be a case that maybe one in 10 fail. Um, so we could take that number out and look at the rest and, you know, choose a, a good median from all of that. I know one thing that people might say with a compiled benchmark or with WSL, that WSL can be IO limited at times and compiled benchmarks can be memory bandwidth limited at times. So I ran this benchmark on the 5950X. I used uh, 3600 memory, run 3200 memory, upgraded the storage from uh, SATA to PCIe Gen 4. And realistically, there was no difference in the benchmark result, 1%, 2% maybe. So this is why I think this is a good candidate for the benchmark suite. What do you think? This sort of benchmark is um, it's interesting. It's sometimes difficult to pull together. Um, so I've tried with the Unreal Engine 4, and that's a bit of a faff. This one was 
arguably eight lines of code once you have WSL installed. Um, you know, and it, yeah, like a three gig download. I've managed to pull it out and make sure we've got it offline, so don't need to deal with that and save on the bandwidth. Um, but I kind of like it. It's something new. It's something interesting. It's um, the Risk Five market is up and coming, and we can definitely see it's going to absorb some of that low end ARM market. Um, but yeah, always on the outlook, always on the lookout for interesting benchmarks, and this one definitely fit the bill. Big thanks to you for watching. Also, big thanks to our high-end Patreons. Uh, you guys really rock. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps our channel. I've got some really exciting content that I hope to get to you over Christmas. And yeah, what's your minimum specification? Risk 5. Wow. <laughs>